co-owner of the very popular LA restaurant Grub, Chef Betty Frazier. Oh, That's so nice. good to see so you. Always oh, such a you. pleasure. Thank you. Hope you had a lovely Christmas. I We're just did. a few days away from New Year's Eve. Right, and this will make a perfect I was gonna New say. Year's mm. Eve dish. Man. I know Comfort you'll be serving food this. at its best. And it's I gotta incredible. tell you guys, this is so easy. It doesn't People look get easy. Intimidated. It looks fancy. No. Well, that's good. Okay, good. Right. So what we so do, you, ladies and gents, dig in. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yeah. please do. <laughs> so we go to the butcher. We ask for short ribs. Okay. We want we want the thick ones. We don't want the Korean ones, which are thin. Right. And we take them. We coat them in in flour and salt and pepper. And then we have a wonderful Dutch oven here. Little bit of oil, okay. olive oil, canola, whatever you like. And we 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 put the short ribs coated in the flour into this and brown them on all sides. Okay. And that helps to develop a flavor on the outside wow. that will that will actually build while it's braising. Okay. So what we do is now what we're going to do is the second step, which is we're going to put these gorgeous oh my gosh. Uh, short ribs right back into this Dutch oven. We have the oven preheated to 325 degrees. Okay. And what we're going to add is a beautiful beef stock. You can use low sodium if you want, no problem there. All right. And, oh, love it. That alone is going to make it so flavorful. Exactly. And then we have wine. Now, don't cook with anything you wouldn't drink. Okay. Okay? All and right. the, the richer the wine, the richer the flavor. So like a hearty Zinfandel would be really okay. nice in that. We have peeled carrots. These are all adding to the flavor sure. of the meat and the gravy oh. that this we're going to have. This is such a perfect meal for cold winter night. It is. Exactly. It's like a big hug. And you know what's great about this too, Debbie, is you can make this ahead of time, mm. like two or three days ahead of time. And then we're gonna add fresh rosemary. You can use dried, but really use fresh whenever okay. you can. And bay leaves. And, and then quite a bit of garlic. Quite a bit. And I Don't be shy. Betty, that the flavors actually come together and it's more flavorful the second and third day. Absolutely. It really does develop. And so what we've got, we've got, see how the meat is nice and covered. It's completely submerged by liquid. All right. So then what we do is we cover it and then we've got the preheated oven and we place it in there. So how long are we gonna oh, or this cook is... this for in the oven? You know what, I would suggest for this amount, which is about two pounds, I would suggest four to six hours. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, that's braising, really low, low and yeah. slow. It's literally falling off my yeah. bone. Like, I, 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 I have a knife here, but you don't yeah. need no, it. No, no, no. What is the secret behind that? that? This is, I like when I pick up my fork to eat it, as I approach the plate, <laughs> the, bow, the meat that's is just falling oh. off. Oh. I don't even have to touch it. That's mouthwatering. So the secret is the low and slow, because okay. what the, lo the, the liquid with the low temperature and the okay. long amount of time will break down all of the toughness in the meat. Man. And that's what we're looking well, thank for. You. Nice. What was the temperature again? 300. 300. Like 300. basically the, uh, the yes. only, the lowest yeah. setting on your. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, just, just open it. Okay, yeah. now what we have is Yukon gold potatoes. And the beauty about these, you yeah, don't have to peel them. Oh, I love them. Mm. Yeah. Because it's such a thin skin. Right. It's such a thin skin, some like, some, like some of my friends. But. Uh, <laughs> I what we do, I always add the butter first because if you add the milk first, you could have a tendency to add too much liquid and then it becomes too runny. runny. Yeah. Nobody wants runny mashed potatoes. No. But I will take a lot of butter. And then it becomes like potato soup. Yeah, <laughs> which, yeah. you know, well, not so that's not so bad. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll mash those up and see how it. easy that's that is. That's satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> With a proper masher. It's one of my favorite things yeah, to do in the kitchen. Absolutely. It's, it's, it out. it's a good arm. Yeah, I love it. See how we're multitasking yeah. here. <laughs> and it's, I think there, it's so quick yeah. that you see yeah. the yes, results of your labor results. so quickly. You're like, oh, look at that. Look what I've done. It. And, and then, then we add. Want to slowly add on a little bit, maybe just a third of it. Okay. Perfect, Debbie. Would you be my. Um, sure, I'll be your masher. My, or you want me to keep pouring? You want to pour and maybe you want to season? Okay. Perfect. That's perfect. Now, you're looking for creamy and you want to add a decent amount of seasoning because potatoes as lovely as they are they don't have a lot of well they don't taste like anything really. yeah yeah so do you use whole milk do you use half and half i use whole milk okay. i use whole milk if i'm using butter i'm using whole milk right, when you boil exactly. them do you um salted add salt too okay you want salted water it just helps to kind of infuse oh it. that looks so amazing see yeah, yummy so. all right and is it is it ever you know i know you said it's 
possible to add too much milk. Is it ever possible to add too much butter? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like No, to that's impossible. Oh, it's so good. Okay, and so that, oh, to me that looks good. I like some texture yeah. because we're going to have the gravy, which will be very thin. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, ding, ding, ding. Imagine it's been six hours. <laughs> oh. oh, we spent so Magic much time on those mashed potatoes. So what we have here oh, is so a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful braised short ribs. And oh, let's see that. Oh, so oh Betty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So All right. Let me bring delicious. this over to you. So what oh, we're wow. going to do. Here you go, Betty. Thank you so much, oh. Debbie. Is we're going to plate up a little bit. Oh, that's be this is perfect potatoes. for New Year's Eve. Make a little. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, this can be made three days ahead, four days ahead. And all you'd have to do is um, reheat it. Look at that. Look how it's coming off. You almost have to get it out. Oh, you can't even take it out. It just fell off. Oh, yes. that's incredible. Oh, my gosh, Betty. Oh, see that? And then you want some of that gravy. I need some of that juice. Yes, You've you got do. some of those beautiful it's vegetables. Absolutely oh, Chevy, delicious. Oh, my. Really Fantastic. Are short ribs something that are hard to, like, do you need, like, to go to a butcher? Or are they available, like, any market? They are available everywhere. Oh, oh, everywhere. So you can probably get them at, you know, your corner grocery store. No, awesome. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and then this is what makes the flavor pop. Yes. This horseradish. Isn't it yummy? Really good. It is mascarpone, which is again a malleable, creamy um, ingredient, and then we add mayonnaise. Mm. Because that wow. helps bring a little vinegar, a little bit of sharpness, and then prepared horseradish, which I'm a sucker for. Yeah, spicy, me too. Spicy, spicy. The so nice little right Have a little yeah. taste so, there, Deb. Hello. Yeah, hello. you're gonna love okay, it. Betty. Uh, mine, right? A little bit was here. devoured. A little bit of green, just for the holidays. It's weird. Thank wow. you so much, buddy. As Debbie's having a little bite there, the full recipe will be at hallmarkchannel.com. <laughs>